Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail the courage of patriots. Our story is entitled, The Invisible Chain. It's a true story of courage and intrigue during historic times of the American Revolution. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... Here is a message for you young women. There's a future for you in Air Force Blue. Yes, an important future in the exciting places of the world. Today, the WAF, Women in the Air Force, is rapidly expanding to keep pace with our defense needs. If you are between the ages of 18 and 34 and can qualify, enlist in the WAF, Women in the Air Force, and join the many patriotic American women who are serving their country on the Air Force team. Visit your United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Have a talk with a recruiting sergeant and learn all of the facts today. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, The Invisible Chain. <laughs> Shortly after dark, the lugger put out between the islands. With the wind strong from the southeast and the tide on the ebb, she sailed on a long reach, cutting a white, frothy track across the sound. But it was a track no hunter could follow, for the sea quickly smoothed it over and the darkness blotted it out. Two hours before midnight, the small sailboat, its sail tightly furled, slipped into a deserted cove above Setauket on the north shore of Long Island. The night was black, and the wind had a bone in its teeth. What of the fish in the sea? All would be independent, free. Evening, Caleb. Uh, evening, Abe. You made it in good time. Yeah. This wind holds, it'll do as well in return. Run into any picket boats? Uh, an area one. Culper Jr. advises me that the information in these dispatches is most vital. Uh-huh. Hand him over. Be out my way. Uh, you can find your way in this darkness is beyond me. Uh, each to his own. <laughs> Ain't I your job, I June founder? <laughs> Should either of us do that, we'd both dance a jig at the end of the news. Uh, we'll, we'll watch for your signal. Here, give me a hand. <laughs> The two men met as they had been doing for over a month, and as they would continue to do for months to come. In October 1778, Abraham Woodhull and Caleb Brewster were engaged in a dangerous and unsung occupation for the cause of independence. They were important members in our country's first intelligence corps. They belonged to the chain Major Benjamin Talmadge had forged and linked around and through the British hell city of New York the place where General Clinton and his officers formulated their strategy on the conduct of the war against the colonies. Sit down, David. Orderly. Send in the dispatch rider. You're looking well. It won't bother you? No, not really, Major. I can tell when it's going to rain. Well, at least... Uh, come in, Thad. Thad, I want these papers delivered to General Washington just as quickly as they can reach him. You'll find him at Middlebrook. Report back here to me as soon as you come in. Good luck. Well, talkative fellow. That's too busy doing to talk. And chewing. <laughs> yes, and <laughs> chewing. Well, David, I've got a job for you, if you feel up to it. Fit as a fiddle, Major. You understand how the system in New York works? I think so. 
Man who calls himself Culper Jr. picks up information in the city and passes it on to a man who calls himself Culper Sr. on Long Island. And he hands it over to a boatman from Connecticut who hands it over to you. That's close enough. Now, of course, Culper Jr. has a number of sources of information. Should any one of them fall into British hands, they could expose Culper Jr. It's a risk, big risk he's had to take. This morning we learned that one of his most important informants was suspected on Wednesday past. They caught him? Not yet, as far as we know. Luckily, he was given some warning and managed to evade capture. He's gone to Earth somewhere in the city. You think if they find him, he'll expose Culper Jr.? Diggs might, to save his own neck. As long as Diggs remains in New York, he's a threat to our most important link in the chain. And you want me to go find him and bring him out? If he hasn't been captured already, yes. If he has been captured, Culper Jr. will know and have left the city. What am I to pose as? A loyalist? The most loyal loyalist that ever drank a toast to George III. Mm. I've arranged everything. You have but to give me your answer. And remember, David, you're under no obligation to undertake this task. It's extremely dangerous. And should you succeed, there'll be no thanks from anyone but General Washington and myself. Well... I'd say that was thanks enough. It was called the neutral ground, and it lay between the outposts of the two armies. It was a vast, thickly wooded, little inhabited no man's land, covering roughly the area between White Plains to the north and King's Bridge to the south. It was an area infested with brigands and gangs of toughs whose only loyalty was to their pocketbook. Here, cavalry patrols of the opposing armies kept restless watch over one another, and now and again clashed in short, grim conflict. The man who traveled this area alone, whether armed or not, was to say the least, foolhardy. Spur! Spur that! He's getting away! Lieutenant Trowbridge! Yes, sir. Light's fading fast. Best be getting back. Bring the troop. Hark! Down there, sir. There he is. Diggins, after him. Troop, water, and ho! Now, sir, suppose you'll tell me who you are and what's your business. Well, first, Captain, let me thank you for saving my neck. Another five minutes and they'd have had me. I'm glad to be of service. You must be a stranger to this territory, or else a bloody fool for riding it alone. Yes, who were they? Well, brigands, thieves, murderers. <laughs> Much safer being chased by rebel cavalry. Uh, <laughs> and them after you too, eh? Yes, I came through the lines west of White Plains. One of their pickets spotted me. They chased me all the way to Scarsdale. Surprised they didn't catch you. Deuced good men. Rabble, sir. Riffraff, the off-scourings of the gutter. Uh, maybe so. Fight them, learn respect. May go in rags, fight like devils, crafty. I'm surprised to hear an English officer say so. <laughs> surprised myself. Who are you, sir? My name is David Gray. I'm from Newport. I bring news from friends there for Major Delancey. Major Delancey expect you? Not exactly, but he'll be glad of the news I bring. Uh, we'll see. You don't trust me, Captain. I don't know you from Adam. Maybe a rebel spy. Trust no one till I'm sure. Well, I guess I can't blame you for that though I blush for shame at the thought. The bookshop stood on what is now the corner of Broadway and Pell Street. It was a fashionable store, and its young proprietor, Robert Townsend, was accepted and liked by British officers and loyalist sympathizers alike. Townsend mingled freely with them, visited the nearby coffee houses in their company, and joined them at the Royal Theatre on John Street, where current news from London was bandied about. There was nothing strange or suspicious about David Gray, late of Newport, visiting the bookshop shortly after his arrival in the city. Good evening, sir. Can I help you? Yes, I'm looking for a somewhat rare edition. Major Littleton said that you might possibly have it. Major Littleton? Oh, yes. Well, it's kind of him to send you here. I hope I have it for you. What's the title? Dr. Pegasus' revelations in the Latin. 
Hmm. I was just locking up for the night. Possible I may have the copy you desire in the back room. Go right through there. I'll join you in a moment. Thank you. I was beginning to think you'd never come. It's been touch and go. How did you manage? I brought reports from Newport to Delancey. Major Talmadge had intercepted their original messenger. I've taken his part. They trust you? Yes, as far as I can tell. You know where Diggs is hiding? Diggs told me if he ever had a run for it, there were three places he might go. Once I locate him, what's our best plan? You must try to get to Setauket and Culper Sr. He can hide you both until a boat can be sent. Now, if you will hold that end of the map, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. Then we can try to make a plan. <laughs> The tavern stood boxed in by a row of run-down buildings, little more than shanties. It was a poor, foul-smelling neighborhood, and after dark, a man must be on his guard. The tavern was frequented by British and Hessian soldiery, press gangs, and a host of other unsavory characters. It was no place for a gentleman of fashion to stick his neck, else he'd lose it. But a man wearing a black patch over his eye, a dirty black coat to match it, and battered tricon to cover his unkempt hair, was accepted into this raucous company without notice. What'll it be? Rum, you fat-bellied pirate. I'll see the color of your money first, one eye. I'll see the color of your blood if you're not cautious. Here, that satisfy you? So, smuggling must be profitable these days. I'll leave off your blathering and bring me rum. What'll it be? Ram? Pint? The bottle, you adult-pated jackanapes. Here. Prime West Indian comes off a privateer not a week past. And I hopes you chokes. <laughs> not bad. Not half bad for a pesto such as this. If it's not to your liking, drink elsewhere. Privateer wouldn't be the Lucy, would she? Might be. Why? I got me a score to settle with one of our crew. That's why, if it's any of your business. Her hands lay too here, off this night. Ah, you don't tell me. You know a yellow-livered, round-bellied cove calls himself Diggs? Diggs, is it? Diggs, is it? You're not deep. He ain't been in tonight. Lucky for him. If you should see him before I do, tell him Uncle Ben's been asking after his elf. And tell him when I get my hands on him, it'll take a quick turn for the worse. I'll do that. Stand easy until after I close. What's your pleasure, mates? Now then, who I in? What do you want with Diggs? I've been sent to try and get him out. What's on the corner of Broadway and Pell Street? Bookshop. Who's the proprietor? Robert Townsend. Does he have another name? Culper Jr. Oh, man. You don't know how close you came to having your innards blown out your back. So they sent you to get him out, eh? Ordinarily, it wouldn't be too hard a task. I know they've got a careful watch out for That's me. not what I mean. When they caught on to him, he came here, and I've kept him hidden since then. Hand tied up. What do you mean? You were right when you said yellow livered. He's green with fear, and he grows more so every day. Were I to turn him loose, he'd run for the British and tell them all he knows to keep the rope off his neck. Oh, that's bad. Hey, not only Culper Jr. would go, but I'd go too. All right, let's have a talk with him. Talking will do little good, I'll warrant I had my mind made up. If you hadn't come tonight, there wouldn't have been any digs on the morrow. Kill him? It's the safest and the quickest way all around. We've got too much at stake to take a risk on the likes of him. You are listening to the Proudly We Hail production, The Invisible Chain. Our story will continue in just a moment after this important message. You know, times have certainly changed. Just a few short years ago, women were completely left out of this man's world. 
Today, however, in more and more instances, women are proving that they can assume the role of skilled technicians. A case in point is aviation. Today, in our rapidly expanding Air Force, women are taking their places as cartographers, control tower operators, cryptographers, and dispatchers. And these are but a few of the vital services now being performed by the women in the Air Force. If you are between the ages of 18 and 34 and can qualify, visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of The Invisible Chain. New York City in the days of the Revolution had a population between 18 and 20,000. The main portion of its inhabitants lived on the lower part of Manhattan, and a large portion of the island was either wooded or farmland. The British headquarters at Beekman Mansion was located at what is now 51st Street and 1st Avenue. As the British had captured the city in 1776, by the fall of 1778, they were completely acquainted with its topography, much of its citizenry, and perhaps most importantly, its avenues for arrival and departure. They also held all land and waterways in the immediate vicinity of the island, and so to get off Manhattan without a proper pass was an extremely difficult and dangerous job. British sentries were alert, suspicious, and constantly on their guard against any illicit movement either into or out of New York. Now listen to me, Diggs, for the last time. I risked my neck to come here and find you. Either you're going to get hold of yourself and agree to try to get away with me, or your host here is going to put a bullet in your head. I tell you, you can't get Don't out. Don't tell me I anything! Tell oh, I waste time with him. He'll only get all of us caught. Be still. Diggs, there's no one who suspects me. I'm thought to be an ardent loyalist. Delancey likes me, will probably offer me a job shortly, but I can't afford to wait around until he does. Now, sooner or later, someone is going to recognize me, or someone is going to come from Newport who knows the man I'm supposed to be. That means our time is short, and we've got to work fast. Have you always worn that beard? What? The beard, the beard. Have you always worn one? Well, I... But Get a shaving bowl. I'll show you how to change a man's looks. Now, boil me for a codfish. If I didn't know it was me, I wouldn't believe it was me. It's fair astonishing. Well, it shows what a little hair dye and grease paint will do. I'll wager when I get rid of these trappings, you'll not recognize me either. I look like a dandy. After a bath, you'll look like my valet. Huh? I don't follow you so good. You're going to follow me back to my lodging. No, no. Now look, you silly fool. If you can't recognize yourself, what makes you think anyone else will recognize you? You're coming with me and you'll do as I say or I'll put a bullet through you. Can't you walk any faster? You've got to get to my lodgings before daylight. I'm doing my best. I can't. Hold. What is it? Hessians. Two squads of them. They're surrounding the house on the corner. Where? Keep back, man. It's the house I've been living in. I knew it, I knew it. Now they're... Shut your face! Me. Turn around and start walking. Slowly. Slowly, I said. What are you going to do now? Get back to the tavern... If we're lucky. Hmm. They found me out sooner than I expected. For all the money I can spare, will it buy us a boat? I'll do my best. The lobster bags keep sharp watch over everything that floats. Well, I just want the boat, not a boatman. Have it left under the docks as close by as possible. You're going to try and get across to Brooklyn? Only way now. Bad cess to it. Pity they found out so soon. Hmm? Luck. We'll hope it changes for the better. Yeah. If there's a fog tonight, you might make it. Then pray for a fog. Follow the street to its end. Diggs knows the way. The boat is under the long wharf. And there'll be a sentry there about, so be on your guard. No time to thank you. Don't even know your name. No need for names. Causes are more important. Good luck. Well, thank you. Come on, Diggs. One peep out of you and we're done. When he reached...
reaches the far end of his post, run to the corner of the wharf and slide down that piling. Into the water? Of course, into the water. Hold on to the piling and I'll join you as soon as he's reached the other end of his wharf. Get ready. This, this, this water's cold. We, we, we'll freeze. Save your breath. You see the boat? There ain't any boat. We, 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 we've been tricked. Keep your voice down, you fool. Can you stay here? I'll swim in under the wharf and see what I can find. <sighs> well, we'll have to paddle across. The oarlocks would make too much noise. Yes. This sleepy tub isn't fit for driftwood. Well, it's a boat of sorts. <sighs> it floats, and with luck, it'll take us where we want to go. Come on, now, sit up forward. Keep your eyes and your ears peeled. How are you going to get out from under this dock without the lobster back seeing us? He's not a cat. As long as he stays off the wharf, he won't see us. I'll paddle till we're clear. Now, sit tight, man. <laughs> Easy all, Diggs. We should be getting close. Yeah, I can't see a foot in this fog. Sit still. Haven't you ever heard ship's bells before? She's right on top of us. There's no such thing. Now ship your oar. I'll paddle the rest of the way. We, we, we got to find a place to hide. Was, it's getting light, and I'm, I'm fair done in. Once we get through their lines, we can find cover. We've had the luck of the devil already. We'll be seen sure in this light. No, not if we stick to the valley. The fog will protect us. I tell you, be we still. Shall... Listen. British dragoons, a whole Persian troop of them. Run, hold Run. on. Come on. Run, and they will see us down by those bushes and lie still. But they'll see us. They're going to see us. Now you'll lie still. It looks like we'll lie here till nightfall. I think we've passed through their lines, but we'd better go cautiously yet a ways. Suppose you think I should be beholden to you. Getting me out of that mess and all? Well, I ain't... Hit me like that, not so much as a by your leave. If I hadn't hit you, sir, you might have received a more permanent injury at the end of a rope. Well, there was no reason for any... Uh, what's all this? Hey! Stand easy or I'll let daylight through you. Who the devil are you and what are you doing here? Get that musket out of my face. Go, will you listen to Mr. Iron Mighty? Get your hands into the air and turn around. Please, we, 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 we ain't done nothing. We you ain't done nothing. You stroll in the moonlight, that's all, eh? Well, we'll just take a stroll back to... Your... Uh, Run! Corporal of the guard! Corporal of the guard! How do you know this be the right house? Just don't ask so many questions and forget you've ever seen this place. Who knocks? Two friends from the city. Culper Jr. sends his regards. Come in, quickly. Well, you look like you've had a time of it. You're Abraham Woodhull? At your service. I'm David Gray. This is Diggs. And they've turned the whole countryside upside down looking for you. Oh, yes, we know. Have they come here? Not as yet. But they're making a very thorough search every house. They may come here tomorrow. How soon can we be taken across the sound? Tomorrow night, weather permitting. You have a place for us to hide in the meantime? I have a place. And we'll hope if the British foxes stop by, they won't nose you out. Sound like they're taking the house apart, stick by stick. Oh, they, they'll find a shoe. Well, stop your sniveling till they do. What's down there behind that trap door? What's down there? 
Oh, that's where I hide rebel agents. Uh, have a look. I will indeed. Sergeant, give me that torch. What are those? Uh, potatoes in the bag, cider in the barrels. Would you care for a dram, Captain? Hmm. Thank you, no. What's behind those barrels? Ooh, just the wall. Barrel's a good place for a man to hide. Let's have the tops off them. Take the tops off them? But, sir, that'll ruin the cider. If you think I've got somebody hidden in them, turn the spigot on each one, you'll see. All right, all right, all right. I think you should know, sir, that I'm a loyal subject of the king. Well, if he had turned on the spigot, I think I'd have run right out of it. Oh, amen to that. The day Tyron's men searched Setauket in the surrounding area for two men thought to be spies against the crown, Judge Strong's wife hung a black petticoat and three white handkerchiefs on her clothesline. With the aid of a telescope, Abraham Woodhull, alias Culper Sr., studied Mrs. Strong's laundry and read in it an important message. Caleb Brewster coming tonight. We'll put in at Hands Cove. Mr. Woodhull, we owe you our lives. Nonsense, man. We're all in this together. My regards to Major Talmadge. Hey, never this talk, Abe. Tide's starting to Biggs, give Mr. Brewster a hand. Well? Goodbye, Mr. Woodhull. Goodbye, David. Dawn should find you safely in Connecticut. Through David Gray's coolness and daring, the weak link in the chain was successfully removed. And until the cessation of hostilities, the chain continued to function, playing a little-known, totally unsung but vital part in the progress of our war for independence. Here's a most important message for young women listening to this radio program. If you are between the ages of 18 and 34 and qualify, you can prove that this is a woman's world, too. How? By enlisting in the WAF, Women in the Air Force. By joining right now when you're needed most and when the opportunities for advancement are greatest, you'll be serving your country well and yourself, too. So do your part in keeping America strong. Visit your local United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station and enlist in the WAF. Women in the Air Force. Do it now. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.